So as an avid motorcycle rider, keen on capturing your rides, you want to know whether you should get the versatile One RS or the 360 video obsessed X3. Luckily, I know the right answer. I get asked this question all the time, so today we're going to put it to bed. However, this is not going to be a review of these cameras. I already have videos reviewing each of these cameras, which I'll link down below if you want to learn more about them. But today we're going to be comparing them to each other, going over what they're good at and not so good at. We'll score them as we go and then decide on a winner at the end. Both of these cameras are made by Insta360, but have slightly different purposes. The One RS is a modular action camera made up of a battery, a core module and a lens. Either a 360 lens or just a typical wide angle lens depending on what you fancy that day. All for $550. The X3 is less flashy. What you see is what you get. It has a lens on each side, allowing it to capture some of the best 360 footage the average consumer can get for $100 less. They even take a different approach to mounting them to your bike. All the parts that make up the RS get crammed into your typical action camera cage, with these generic prongs protruding off the bottom, where a thumb screw can attach it all to your favorite GoPro mounts. Whereas the X3 has a threaded tripod mount, just like you'd find on a regular camera. At first, I was really against this idea and thought it overcomplicated the normal mounting method and would just wiggle loose in a few miles. But after using cameras with this mount for over two years now, I love how simple they are to mount. For example, these clamps that you can get in the motorcycle bundle from Insta360 already have a tripod mount on the end. So you just thread your camera on and clamp it to your bike. No faffing with thumb screws or cross threading them. And these days, I actually get annoyed when I have to mount the RS or a GoPro. Wait, there's also the shape to consider when mounting. The RS is a more sensible shape when mounting it on your helmet, but it really doesn't matter when mounted to the bike. In fact, the X3 is more aerodynamic than the RS when mounted sideways. The scoring thing is harder than I thought. I guess they can each have another point then. Once a camera is mounted, there are just a few more decisions to make before you can get rolling. Do you want photos or video? Okay, will that be in 4K, 2.7K or 1080p? How about your frame rate? 60 FPS, 30 or a more natural 24 FPS? And how about your color? Are you gonna go with vivid color or are you happy to grade it yourself later? I'm sure you know the drill. Answering the questions is hard enough. So to do it on a tiny screen like the RS has is even worse. Of course, they can both be controlled by Insta360's app, but it's often faster just to plug in your decisions on the camera quickly, and the X3's big 2.29 inch screen helps a lot. But not as much as pre-programmable modes. Below the power button on the X3, there's a quick menu button, allowing you to easily switch between settings you previously programmed for different use cases whether it's 360 video, photos, or slow motion. This is an incredibly underrated feature in my opinion, and can save you a ton of time and screw-ups. In fact, I think that deserves two points. Okay, but now for what you really care about. Which one has the best looking footage, so that you actually have a decent memory of your best rides? <laughs> When it comes to 360 video, they both look very similar. They both record at 5.7K, which when cropped down to your typical field of view is only 1080p but it's still the best 360 video quality you can buy. Insta360 leads the game here, and I never get tired of the awesome angles and swooping shots I can get with my 360 cameras.
so they each deserve a point. But when it comes to your wide angle footage, the one with the dedicated lens for the job has the upper hand. Despite only having the 360 lens setup, the X3 can film in single lens mode to film in one direction. It can even do it in 4K and looks pretty good. I enjoy how it levels the horizon and would be happy to use this footage if I didn't already have a GoPro that does it better. The RS can also shoot in 4K and also looks pretty good, but the field of view isn't as wide as I'd like. It does, however, have plenty of modes to choose from, including HDR and a 6K wide screen mode, which is pretty cool if you have a use for it. Unfortunately, I usually opt to film with my old GoPro Hero 7 instead because it is wider and looks better in my opinion, but the RS gets a point nevertheless. Both of these cameras have a cool party trick when it comes to photos. The RS can take 48 megapixel photos with its wide angle lens, so you can crop in an insane amount without it getting pixelated. And the X3 can take 72 megapixel 360 photos, allowing you to choose from infinite angles and crop it for Instagram while still getting a good quality photo, which bumps each camera up a point. They can both accommodate your strange hobby of putting a microphone in your helmet, plugging said microphone into the camera, and riding around sharing your most intimate thoughts and road rage. Would Kawasaki's be faster if they were blue? Is that the secret to Yamaha's brilliance? So now what you're listening to is a lapel microphone inside of my helmet, plugged into the side of the Insta360 ONE RS with their new mic adapter. They both simply just get the job done rather than excel at it, but in my opinion the X3 does a slightly better job. There's really no difference here at all, since they both use the same apps from Insta360 apps that have severely improved since I started filming with their cameras and are still currently improving. The workflow does take a bit of getting your head around, but then whatever you want to do is pretty straightforward. There is plenty of automation, like subject tracking and auto editing to make your life easier, or using your phone as a viewfinder to dictate what's in frame, so you don't have to be knowledgeable about video editing to get what you want which personally upsets me as someone who likes video editing. The X3 is what it is, there's no upgrading it. You will get software updates throughout your ownership which will make it better to use, but you're stuck with this hardware until the X4 comes out, by which time you'll have to buy an entirely new camera to upgrade. Whereas upgradability is the RS's purpose in life. This is the second generation of this camera, and they've proven that when they bring out a new lens or processing module, you can just slap it onto your existing camera and make it better for less money than a whole new camera. Not to mention, every now and then they come out with accessories that can fit these cameras, like bigger batteries or fancy niche lenses that are a bit of fun if you're into camera stuff. Okay, so truth be told, the whole scoring system thing was complete rubbish and entirely for my own amusement. Because the reality is, if you even had to ask which of these two cameras you should buy, then you should buy the RS. If you had zero interest in the wide-angle feature to begin with, you wouldn't have even considered the RS in the first place. The RS does a little bit of everything quite well, and the X3 does 360 very well. It's not rocket science. No matter which of these cameras you buy, you will like them. But anyway, there are often specials where you can get a free gift with your camera if you buy through my affiliate links, like a selfie stick or biker bundle. So please consider doing so if you pick up a camera. Let me know which camera you would buy and I'll see you on the next ride.